Greetings world, here's another episode of Inside Life. My name is Vijay Taiwo. I have the pleasure of sitting here today with the amazing, if I do say so myself, Dylan. Hi Dylan. I'm well. Good. Good to have you on here. Thank you. How's Lagos treating you? You were telling me just a few minutes ago that this is your second time in Lagos. Mm -hmm. What's Lagos like for you? Lagos is very different from uh, where I live in London. Um, but it, is it? It's, it's completely different. It's a complete opposite. But um, it's amazing. The weather is it's warm. Um, it's bustling. People are very can be very friendly, but funny as well. And How do you mean funny? How do you mean funny? Just crazy situations and things that are said that you would never hear in London. It's, it's very exciting. It's like it's it's an exciting place to be. Um, and being half Nigerian, I just love being here and love seeing my people. And I come here with my family and right. I just have a great time. Right. Let's 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 talk about that for a minute. You come from a long line, at least your Nigerian side. You know, a long line of creatives. You know, creative enter entrepreneurs. You know, entertainers and all that. What's what's that done for you? How, how aware of you of that legacy? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess it's in my blood because it's just something that comes natural to me. Um, being creative, I love music, I love um, dancing, I love any performance. Um, so it's, it's very obvious that it's something that is natural to me. Um, my parents aren't creative at all, but I have other family members who are. So I'm growing up, I was kind of, it was just me being creative, but they appreciated um, my love for music and performance as well. Talk to me, talk to me about the music. Now the rage is Afrobeat and I'm happy to know that we've taken over the London scene, mm -hmm. right? You don't do Afrobeats, do you? No, I haven't, I haven't gone into Afrobeats yet. Oh, but okay. I do want I like to. that word yet. Yes, yeah. It's coming, isn't it? Yes. Um, of course I want to, um, do Afrobeats at some point when it is right for me, which will be soon. Um, but it's more about finding the right people to work with, I think, right. um, because it's a genre that I didn't write or I don't write and I haven't grown up writing. So I need to work with someone who knows how to bring me into that space. Mm. So it sounds good. We don't want it to sound... Um, Contrived? Yeah, up. yeah. Gotcha. We, we want it to sound good. So, um, But Afrobeat is everywhere. Everywhere you go in London, they're playing Afrobeat now. Yes. Every restaurant, um, club. So is there a faint sense of pride in there somewhere? Mm -hmm. For me personally, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, to see that every culture now is loving Afrobeat mm. um, from all over the world. I think that's something that's really special. Gotcha. But let's talk about something that you do do, right? Mm -hmm. um, R&B, mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of alternative. Mm -hmm. Alternative uh, R&B. What does that mean? No, so when I think R&B, mm -hmm. you know, I think of, say, Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. and then down the line, Whitney, the rest of them. But it's alternative R&B. Yeah. What's that? I think that's like a new genre that's come in um, over the last few years because it's kind of a fusion of different um, genres in R&B. Um, so it's not just traditional R&B now. Um, you've got R&B with a little bit of a pop, maybe a little bit of a um, jazz, uh, soul that's introduced into it now. Um, that's why it's alternative because it's different to the, the usual R&B that we're used to. Right. Um, so that's me because I listen to every genre of music. Um, so I put that into my sound. So it's not just traditional R&B. It's got a mixture of a lot of different songs. Right. Um, could we chat like the cores of, of your music? Um, so I know you started singing and performing early, mm -hmm. right? So you were out six, seven or thereabouts? Yes, yeah. Yes, and then you just used to sing around the house. Mm -hmm. At what point did it occur to you that, oh, I could be this, mm -hmm. you know? Did you always want to be a singer and entertainer? Mm -hmm. Or did you walk, want to work with the police or something? Mm -hmm. what, what was your childhood dream? Yeah, no, I always loved singing and performing, um, but I was also very studious. And obviously having um, a Nigerian family, they encouraged me to be um, studious. So um, I loved reading. Um, I did like maths as well, um, but I was going to do study law. Um, oh, so okay. I did politics and I was going to go into that um, legal mm. side. Oops. Yeah. Um, and I still love that kind of thing. I love being in the corporate world as well. I have that side of me, but the creative side is really what comes natural to me. Um, 
So what, what did I want to be? I potentially, I think maybe a lawyer, but I also like um, a lot of human rights work. Right. Um, so charity work as well. I just like helping people and giving um, to people as well. Mm. So I think that's probably what I would have done. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, you became an entertainer. Mm -hmm. um, what was the transition point for you from being, you know, Dylan singing around the house mm -hmm. and then Dylan performing in front of people? Mm -hmm. I think um, growing up, I wasn't really around too many people who were also entertainers. So for me, it kind of seemed very far away, but it was something you couldn't really do. It's too difficult. How do you start? Then I started to meet some people who were also entertainers and they were doing it successfully. And I saw, oh, this is how you do it. These are the steps that you take to become a professional mm. entertainer. I said, okay, I can do that. Um, and then I started to see people like my stuff. Um, people really resonated with it. So I just thought, okay, this is something I should take on seriously. Right. right. So what, what, what comes more naturally to you, singing or writing? Um, I would say both. I love singing other people's songs. I have my favorite singers, but then I write just in my day to day, I have little lyrics that come up just mm. every day right. and I have to write them down so they're two things that are very natural to me right so what what's what's the journey for you in in religion music um mm. so a little bit of context so the Nigerian music and entertainment scene has had this kind of resurgence in the last six or seven years mm -hmm. used to be a bit difficult to make music and put it out right mm -hmm. it's not the same for you in the UK so mm -hmm the the pipeline is more established in the uk so mm -hmm. you make music sign to a record label put the music out what was what's that journey been for you or are you signed to a major mm -hmm. are you working in the are you collaborating what what's that space like mm -hmm. for you so i'm independent at the moment is that good um, or bad though i think it's good because you get the creative freedom that you want um nobody is really telling you um you have to do this you have to uh, you're yeah, not worried something. about all of the um you know the sign-on bonuses all of whatnot that mm -hmm. that major labels provide for mm -hmm. artists is that is that a fair trade-off for you that mm -hmm. your creative freedom is more important to you than whatever a label could offer you in the beginning yeah i think the creative freedom is very important and also in this day and age because the music industry it's much harder to make money when you get that um advance you have to make it back and it's much harder now to make it back right. so it's like now it's sort of the trade-off it's like you're also losing that creative freedom and you have to pay back this large loan essentially mm. so being independent you can fund it yourself um and you know that it's not you're not in debt to anyone necessarily and you have that creative freedom so, so i think it's a bit more freeing and more people are doing it um, more artists are becoming independent because it's now easier to do that you don't necessarily need the big labels right. anymore right so are you are you looking at making music and releasing it in the traditional form so you have an album out you have an ep out you have all of this out or are you um used to be this guy ryan leslie right i had a funny way of and you know it's one of the people that talk about independent music a lot so he had this way of dropping music to his core fans it has a niche of fans mm -hmm. or do you want to do the what we're more used to in having you know a buzz you have a moment you drop your music do tours you're on tour mm -hmm. are you on tour currently so at the moment i have a show my first show of the year um on may 7th yeah um, so it's my own evening right um so it's a whole night of just uh, my music that's in london no? yeah in london mm -hmm. whereabouts um so it's in uh great portland street a venue called the lucky pig right so that's the first show of the year yeah you're taking your time haven't you mm -hmm. i'm i've been i released a, a song in january alongside a music video and then i'm gonna have another release next month as well a coincidence you made a name for yourself the allure of what you have speaks for itself how i I'm just planning the next few months um, of releases and shows. There's going to be a lot more shows. Mm. What's the What's the overwhelming inspiration of yours? I know you've been compared. You know, we're talking Offset, and someone compared you to Ishadi Adu, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. 
is that an inspiration of yours you know as to, a tone you know or and she has this mystique about her mm -hmm. which i think you do have yourself yeah she's a massive inspiration and i think she's timeless as well we can listen to her back in like the 80s and 90s you can listen to her now it still feels fresh um and yeah she's she has that mystique she's not overdoing it with vocals it's just very kind of like relaxed and confident in her vocals which is what i love it's it's just kind of like she she's saying what she wants to say she's not trying to prove anything mm. um so that's why i love her and her style everything is just timeless with her right. so i just love her right um a, a few thoughts on you know on pop culture mm -hmm. if you may um in recent time we've had the folks in hip-hop battling back and forth um you've had people using their music for you know special causes and, and things of that nature what do you think is the place of um pop culture music in, in larger society um, and i'll tell you why you know there's there's a section of nigerian audiences that feel like music should be for enjoyment so to speak um and to quote fella kuti you say african music cannot be for enjoyment it has to be for struggle but even when you're struggling there are you know down times times that you need to just relax a little bit to you how what's the role of music and pop culture in society well music is one of the most powerful um mediums of entertainment i think so um it is going to obviously have an effect on pop culture and i think um what the youth is listening to as well what young people what we're listening to drives a lot of it as well drives pop culture um and it can be positive and negative but the type of music that is out and that is popular it can have a positive effect on society it can have a negative effect um so i think it's really powerful it's really really powerful do you like Nigerian food? Yes. What's your favorite? Um, I have too many things that I like. Oh, okay. So top five, <laughs> top five, top five. Yo, oh, listen. Top five, right? Right. I jollof rice, obviously. Oh, for sure. Um, shaki. <gasps> oh no. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about it. Um, I just love it. It's amazing. Assorted meat. What else? A gusi. Ooh. Um, plantain. Oh wow, yeah, Nigerian through and through. What's your top five British food? I don't have top five British food. No. You like everything. <laughs> no, I don't like anything. Thank you. I was, I was, I was yeah. hoping you'd say no, that. No, good stuff. They have yeah, good some. Um, yeah. Sunday roast. Okay. Are nice. Um, fish and chips. And oh, fish and chips. Well, it's a staple. Bangers um, and marsh. Not quite. Not too much. Right. It reminds me of being in school. So <gasps> I, I what, what, what part of it? So, <laughs> what part of it? Yeah. Did you go to boarding school? No, I was in. I've, I've lived in London uh, my whole life. Uh, um, they they give you those British meals mm. in school. Mm. They give you all of those staples. Right. Um, there's a lot of nice desserts as well. Right. Um, but nothing compared to no, pepper soup, shaki. No. It's the flavouring. Yes, yes. The, the food is the same in mm. in the UK. Yeah. Just with the food, it's not the same. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I like. I like. I mean, your eyes just lit up when you're talking about the flavours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I haven't had it yet. Because I'm obviously I've just got to Lagos. Oh wow! I'm just waiting. How much time do you have? A couple of days. Oh okay. A couple of days. So I'm waiting to. We'll have go through. We'll go through. A full yeah. Yes. Spread of the jollof rice. So. We're here for you. We're yes. here for you. Oh, by the way, as as we finish, as we wrap up, you seem to be really chill. Mm -hmm. No. What's the loudest your voice can go? My voice can get really loud. Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm chilled with the normal conversation, but if you ask any of my friends, I'm the one like running, screaming around like oh, in okay. the room. Should yeah. we try? But also, also, yeah. it's early morning. No, no, so it's it's, time. it's it's almost midday. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of just more chilled. Okay. So can we take it a notch? Can you speak this high? Can your voice go this high? <laughs> so you want it to go louder? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Say Dylan. 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 <laughs> you can go higher, can't you? I can go. Of course, I'm a singer. I can. Yeah, you have I all can, of those things. Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. Sound. Yeah. Do you want to give us a little something? <laughs> a little something. From yours. A little song. A little song, if you don't mind. Line two, three. We don't mind. This okay. is you. Um, one of my favorite songs that I released. Uh, it's called Trouble in Paradise, so I'll do a little 
Okay. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Didn't you want the best for us? Didn't you want some happiness? I know you were so shameless But I didn't expect it And all of my friends wanna be us They wanna know what is our secret But they don't know what we've been through What I had to see you do Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Now I'm going to be playing that all day then. Now we're going to bring you that. Uh, Thank you, thank you, Dylan, for spending part of your morning with you thank with you us. Thank you so much um, for it's, me. it's a delight to converse with you, and I'm sure this will be the final conversation we mm -hmm. have, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, say, say hi to your Lagos fans and tell them we'll be back. Hello. You are back in another month, no? Yes, I am. Oh, in a couple weeks. Yeah. Okay, we'll so wait. I'll be back we'll next wait. month. Yeah. So, say hi to Lagos folks. Hi, Lagos. <laughs> this is Dylan. I'm Dylan and Laura. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank we'll you. see you in a bit. You. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, guys. You. Round of applause for Dylan. Oh.